Ghost Whispers Beneath the Paint Minneapolis Institute of Art Chapter 1 Whispers in the Gallery The Minneapolis Institute of Art stood tall and proud, a beacon of culture and history in the heart of the city. Its grand facade, with its intricate carvings and towering pillars, had seen countless exhibitions and millions of visitors over the years. But none quite like the Lost History exhibition. Inside, the museum buzzed with activity. Curators and staff hurried about, ensuring that every painting was hung perfectly, every artifact displayed just right. The Lost History exhibition was the talk of the town, a collection of paintings that had been lost to time, only to be rediscovered and brought together for the world to see. Visitors milled about, their faces a mix of awe and curiosity. Some were art enthusiasts, eager to see the long-lost masterpieces. Others were tourists, drawn by the allure of the mysterious paintings. And then there were those who were there out of sheer curiosity, having heard the whispers about the painting's haunted past. In the midst of the crowd was Beatrice, a young woman with raven black hair and piercing blue eyes. She was the museum's newest curator having joined just a few months ago. But she was no stranger to the world of art. She had grown up surrounded by paintings and sculptures, her parents both renowned art historians. As Beatrice moved through the gallery, she couldn't help but feel a sense of unease. She had always been sensitive to the energies around her, often feeling things that others couldn't. And today, as she stood amidst the lost history paintings, she felt a chill run down her spine. She paused in front of a particularly striking painting. It depicted a grand mansion, its windows glowing with a warm, golden light. But there was something off about the painting. The shadows seemed to move, the trees swaying ever so slightly, the windows flickering as if there were candles inside. Beatrice shook her head, trying to dispel the uneasy feeling. It was just a painting, after all. But as she turned to move on, she felt a cold hand on her shoulder. She spun around, but there was no one there. Just the throngs of visitors, all engrossed in the paintings. She took a deep breath, trying to calm her racing heart. It was probably just her imagination, she told herself. But as she moved on, she couldn't shake the feeling that she was being watched. The day wore on, and the museum began to empty out. The last of the visitors made their way out, leaving the staff to close up for the night. Beatrice was in her office, going over some paperwork, when she heard a soft whisper. Help me. Dot dot quote. She froze, her heart pounding in her chest. The voice was soft, almost ethereal, but it was unmistakably there. Who's there? She called out, her voice trembling. There was no answer. Just the soft rustling of the curtains and the distant hum of the city outside. Beatrice slowly got up, her eyes darting around the room. She made her way to the door, her steps hesitant. She opened it slowly peering out into the dimly lit hallway. The museum was silent, the only sound the soft ticking of the grandfather clock in the main hall. Beatrice took a deep breath, trying to calm her nerves. It was probably just her imagination, she told herself. But as she made her way down the hallway, she couldn't shake the feeling that she was not alone. She paused in front of the gallery where the lost history paintings were displayed. The room was bathed in a soft, eerie glow, the paintings seeming to come alive in the dim light. Beatrice felt a pull, an inexplicable urge to go inside. She stepped into the gallery, her eyes drawn to the painting of the mansion. It seemed to shimmer, the shadows deepening, the windows glowing with an otherworldly light. And then, she saw her. A figure, standing in front of the mansion. A young woman, with long, 
flowing hair and a white dress that billowed around her. She was looking straight at Beatrice, her eyes filled with sadness and despair. Beatrice gasped, stumbling back. The figure reached out, her hand outstretched, her fingers brushing against the canvas. And then, just as suddenly as she had appeared, she was gone. Beatrice stood there, her heart racing, her mind reeling. She had heard the stories, the whispers about the haunted paintings. But she had never believed them. Until now. She took a deep breath, trying to calm herself. She needed to find out more, to uncover the truth behind the lost history paintings. And she had a feeling that the young woman in the painting held the key. With a newfound determination, Beatrice made her way out of the gallery, her mind racing with questions. Who was the young woman? What did she want? And why was she reaching out to Beatrice? As she stepped out into the night, the city lights glowing around her, Beatrice knew one thing for certain. The Lost History exhibition was just the beginning. And she was about to embark on a journey that would change her life forever. Chapter 2 Echoes in Empty Halls The next morning, the Minneapolis Institute of Art was abuzz with whispers. Word had spread about the strange occurrences in the Connecticut and Tudor rooms, and visitors were both intrigued and apprehensive. Some came out of sheer curiosity, eager to experience the paranormal for themselves, while others were more skeptical, dismissing the rumors as mere publicity stunts. Beatrice arrived early, her mind still reeling from the previous night's encounter. She had barely slept haunted by the image of the young woman in the painting. As she made her way to her office, she overheard snippets of conversation from the staff. I swear, I felt a cold breeze in the Connecticut room, even though all the windows were closed, one of the guides was saying. And I saw a shadow move in the Tudor room, another added. It was there one moment and gone the next. Beatrice paused, her heart racing. She wasn't the only one who had experienced the paranormal. As the day wore on, more and more visitors reported strange occurrences. Some spoke of cold spots that seemed to move around the rooms, while others claimed to have seen apparitions, ghostly figures that appeared and disappeared in the blink of an eye. The museum's security team was on high alert, monitoring the CCTV footage closely. And it wasn't long before they made a chilling discovery. In the footage from the Connecticut room, a painting could be seen moving on its own, tilting to one side before writing itself. In another clip from the Tudor room, a shadowy figure could be seen gliding across the floor, disappearing into thin air. The footage was shown to the museum's director, who was at a loss for an explanation. The clips were clear and there was no sign of tampering. The paranormal activities were real, and they were escalating. Word of the footage spread like wildfire, and soon, the museum was flooded with visitors, all eager to catch a glimpse of the supernatural. The media caught wind of the story, and reporters flocked to the museum, their cameras and microphones at the ready. In the midst of the chaos, Henry, the museum's head of security, remained skeptical. A no-nonsense man in his early fifties, he had seen it all, from petty thefts to elaborate heists. And he wasn't about to be fooled by some ghost stories. It's probably just some technical glitches, he said dismissively, as he reviewed the footage. Or maybe someone's idea of a prank. Beatrice, who had been watching the clips with him, frowned. Henry you've seen the footage. How do you explain the painting moving on its own? Or the shadowy figure? Henry shrugged. There's always a logical explanation. Maybe there was a draft that caused the painting to move. And as for the figure, it could be a trick of the light. Beatrice shook her head, exasperated. Henry, I've experienced the paranormal firsthand. 
I've seen the young woman in the painting, I've felt her presence. This is real. Henry raised an eyebrow, a hint of amusement in his eyes. Beatrice, you're a smart woman. Don't let your imagination get the better of you. Beatrice bristled, her patience wearing thin. Henry, this is bigger than both of us. We need to get to the bottom of this, before things get out of hand. Henry sighed, running a hand through his graying hair. Look, I'll keep an eye on things. But I'm telling you, there's a logical explanation for all of this. Beatrice nodded, not convinced. Just promise me you'll keep an open mind. Henry smirked. I always do. As the day wore on, the paranormal activities intensified. Visitors reported feeling an oppressive energy in the Connecticut and Tudor rooms, as if they were being watched. Some even claimed to have heard whispered voices, calling out to them from the shadows. The museum staff was on edge, with some refusing to enter the affected rooms. Beatrice, however, was determined to get to the bottom of the mystery. She spent hours poring over the museum's archives, looking for any clues that might shed light on the haunting. As night fell, the museum emptied out, the last of the visitors making their way out. Beatrice, however, remained, her curiosity piqued. She made her way to the Connecticut room, her footsteps echoing in the empty hallways. As she entered the room, she felt a sudden drop in temperature, the air heavy with anticipation. She took a deep breath, steeling herself for what was to come. And then, she heard it. A soft whisper, calling out to her from the shadows. Help me. Beatrice froze, her heart pounding in her chest. She wasn't alone. She turned slowly, her eyes scanning the room. And there, in front of the painting of the mansion, stood the young woman, her eyes filled with sadness and despair. Beatrice took a step forward, her voice trembling. Who are you? What do you want? The young woman looked at her, her eyes pleading. Help me. Find the truth. And with that, she disappeared, leaving Beatrice alone in the dimly lit room. Beatrice took a deep breath, her mind racing. She had to find out the truth, to uncover the mystery behind the haunting. And she had a feeling that the answers lay within the walls of the museum. As she made her way out of the room, she couldn't shake the feeling that she was being watched. But she was determined, her resolve unwavering. She would uncover the truth, no matter the cost. Chapter 3 Shadows of the past The days following the initial disturbances were marked by an escalating tension within the Minneapolis Institute of Art. The once serene and contemplative atmosphere of the museum was now charged with an electric anticipation, as if the very walls were waiting for something to happen. Maggie's spirit grew more restless with each passing day. The once subtle signs of her presence became overt displays of desperation. Paintings would tilt on their own, lights would flicker without reason, and on more than one occasion, objects related to the lost history exhibition would inexplicably fall from their places, shattering on the cold marble floors. Visitors, initially intrigued by the tales of the haunted exhibition, began to feel uneasy. Several reported hearing soft, whispered pleas emanating from the vicinity of the painting depicting the Grand Mansion. The whispers, though faint, were filled with such palpable sorrow that they left an indelible mark on those who heard them. Save me. Unveil the truth. Beatrice, already sensitive to the energies of the museum, found herself deeply affected by Maggie's increasing desperation. She felt a pull a connection to the spirit that she couldn't explain. And then, one fateful night, the connection deepened. After a particularly taxing day at the museum, Beatrice returned to her apartment, her mind heavy with the weight of the unsolved mystery. 
Exhausted, she fell into a deep sleep, only to be jolted into a vivid dream. She found herself standing outside the grand mansion from the painting. The setting sun bathed the mansion in a warm, golden hue, but the beauty of the scene was marred by an underlying tension. Beatrice could feel it in the air, a sense of impending doom. She entered the mansion and was immediately transported to a different era. The furnishings, the attire of the people, everything pointed to the mid-1800s. She moved through the mansion as an unseen observer, watching the scenes unfold before her. In the grand ballroom, a party was in full swing. Men in tailored suits and women in elaborate gowns danced to a haunting melody. Among them was Maggie, looking radiant in a white dress that contrasted starkly with her raven black hair. She danced with a tall man, their movements in perfect harmony. But as Beatrice watched, she noticed the subtle signs of distress in Maggie's eyes. The dream shifted, and Beatrice found herself in a dimly lit room. Maggie was there, arguing with the same man she had danced with. Their voices were hushed, but the intensity of their conversation was palpable. You cannot control me. Maggie's voice echoed with defiance. The man's response was cold and menacing. You will regret this. The scene changed again, and Beatrice was now outside, in the mansion's sprawling gardens. It was night, and the only light came from the moon, casting long shadows on the ground. Maggie was there, running, her white dress billowing behind her. She looked over her shoulder, fear evident in her eyes. Behind her, the man gave chase, his intentions clear. Beatrice wanted to scream, to warn Maggie, but she was powerless, a mere spectator in this unfolding tragedy. She watched as Maggie reached the edge of the garden, the cliffs that overlooked the raging sea below. With nowhere to go, Maggie turned to face her pursuer, defiance in her eyes. There was a brief struggle, and then, with a heart-wrenching scream, Maggie was pushed off the cliff, her figure disappearing into the darkness below. Beatrice jolted awake, her heart pounding in her chest. The dream, though intangible, had felt so real, so vivid. She was drenched in sweat, the images of Maggie's final moments etched into her mind. As the reality of her surroundings set in, Beatrice realized that the dream was more than just a figment of her imagination. It was a memory, a glimpse into Maggie's life and her tragic end. With a newfound determination, Beatrice knew what she had to do. She had to uncover the truth, to bring justice to Maggie's spirit. The Lost History exhibition held the key, and Beatrice was ready to delve deep into the past, to unravel the mystery that had bound Maggie's spirit to the museum. The sun was just beginning to rise, casting a soft glow over the city. Beatrice stood by her window, looking out at the horizon. The journey ahead was uncertain, filled with challenges and dangers. But she was ready, for she knew that the truth, no matter how painful, had the power to set Maggie's spirit free. Chapter 4 Unveiling Shadows The Minneapolis Institute of Art was a sanctuary of knowledge, not just through its exhibits but also its vast archives. Beatrice knew that if she were to uncover the truth behind the haunting, she would need to delve deep into the history of the lost history paintings. She began her research in the museum's library, a grand room filled with towering bookshelves and ancient manuscripts. The scent of old books filled the air, a comforting aroma that always put Beatrice at ease. With a steaming cup of tea by her side, she began her quest, sifting through volumes of art history and catalogues of past exhibitions. Hours turned into days as Beatrice immersed herself in her research. She learned about the various artists, the eras they belonged to, and the stories behind their masterpieces. 
but it was a small, dusty journal that held the key to the mystery. The journal belonged to a renowned art historian from the late 1800s. In it, he detailed his travels and discoveries, including a visit to a grand mansion on Long Island. Beatrice's heart raced as she read his account of the mansion, its opulent ballrooms, and sprawling gardens. But it was his description of a particular painting that caught her attention. The painting, he wrote, depicted the mansion in all its glory, with a young woman standing in the foreground. The historian noted the sadness in her eyes, a stark contrast to the grandeur of the mansion behind her. He wrote of rumors that the painting was haunted, with many claiming to have seen the young woman's apparition. Beatrice's hands trembled as she read the historian's account. The painting he described was the same one from the Lost History exhibition, the one that held Maggie's spirit. The pieces of the puzzle were beginning to fall into place. She continued reading, her eyes scanning the pages for any mention of Maggie. And then, she found it. The historian wrote of a tragic tale, of a young woman named Maggie who had lived in the mansion. She was said to have been in love with a man her family disapproved of. Their love story ended in tragedy, with Maggie meeting an untimely death. Beatrice felt a lump in her throat as she read the account. She could feel Maggie's pain, her despair. The connection between them grew stronger, a bond forged by shared sorrow. With the journal as her guide, Beatrice decided to visit the Long Island mansion. She needed to see it for herself, to walk its halls and feel its history. She believed that the mansion held the key to freeing Maggie's spirit. The journey to Long Island was a long one, but Beatrice didn't mind. She felt a sense of purpose, a determination to uncover the truth. The mansion, now a historic site, stood tall and proud, just as it had in the painting. Beatrice could feel its energy, the echoes of the past still resonating within its walls. She spent hours exploring the mansion, from its grand ballrooms to its dimly lit corridors. She could feel Maggie's presence, guiding her, leading her to the truth. And then, in a secluded room, she found it. Hidden behind a newer painting was the original masterpiece, the one that depicted Maggie and the mansion. Beatrice could see the layers of paint, the attempts to cover up the truth. But Maggie's spirit shone through, her eyes pleading for justice. Beatrice knew what she had to do. She needed to restore the painting, to bring Maggie's story to light. With the help of the museum's restoration team, the painting was carefully cleaned and restored to its former glory. The Lost History exhibition was updated to include the restored painting, along with the tragic tale of Maggie and her ill-fated love. Visitors flocked to see the masterpiece, drawn by its haunting beauty and the story behind it. Beatrice felt a sense of accomplishment, a satisfaction in knowing that she had brought Maggie's story to light. But her work was far from over. She knew that there were more spirits out there, waiting for their stories to be told. And she was determined to help them, to give them a voice. As she stood in front of the restored painting, Beatrice felt a soft breeze, a gentle touch on her shoulder. She turned, half expecting to see Maggie's apparition. But there was no one there, just the soft rustling of the curtains and the distant hum of the city outside. Beatrice smiled, a sense of peace washing over her. She knew that Maggie's spirit was finally at rest, free from the chains of the past. And as she walked away, she felt a renewed sense of purpose, a determination to continue her quest, to uncover the hidden stories that lay waiting to be told. Chapter 5 The Unbelievers Awakening The Minneapolis Institute of Art was abuzz with whispers and murmurs. The restored painting and the tragic tale of Maggie had captured the imagination of the city. Visitors flocked to the museum, 
drawn by the haunting beauty of the painting and the promise of a brush with the supernatural. In the midst of this newfound fame, Beatrice found herself at odds with Henry. The head of security had always been a skeptic, dismissing the tales of hauntings and apparitions as mere superstitions. But as the paranormal events escalated, even he couldn't ignore the evidence. One evening, after the museum had closed for the day, Henry confronted Beatrice in her office. The room was dimly lit, the only light coming from a single desk lamp. The shadows seemed to dance on the walls, adding to the tension in the air. Beatrice, Henry began, his voice stern, I've always respected you, both as a colleague and a friend. But this, this obsession with the supernatural is getting out of hand. Beatrice looked up, her blue eyes meeting Henry's. Henry, I know it's hard to believe. But I've seen it, felt it. Maggie's spirit is real, and she's trying to tell us something. Henry scoffed, his skepticism evident. Ghosts, spirits, hauntings. It's all just stories, Beatrice. There's always a logical explanation. Beatrice sighed, her patience wearing thin. Henry, you've seen the footage, heard the accounts. How can you still deny the truth? Henry leaned forward, his eyes narrowing. Because I refuse to believe in fairy tales. This is all just a publicity stunt, a way to draw in more visitors. Beatrice shook her head, exasperated. Henry, I wish it were that simple. But there's something going on here, something bigger than both of us. Henry was about to retort when a sudden chill filled the room. The lights flickered, and the shadows deepened. The air grew heavy, charged with anticipation. Beatrice and Henry exchanged a glance, both sensing that something was about to happen. And then, they heard it. A soft, whispered plea, echoing through the room. Help me. Henry's eyes widened in shock, his skepticism replaced by fear. He looked around, trying to find the source of the voice. But there was no one there, just the two of them in the dimly lit room. The voice grew louder, more insistent. Help me. Find the truth. Henry stumbled back, his face pale. What? Dot dot. What was that? Beatrice took a deep breath, her voice trembling. That was Maggie. She's trying to reach out to us, to tell us her story. Henry sank into a chair, his mind reeling. I. I don't understand. How is this possible? Beatrice knelt beside him, her hand on his shoulder. Henry, the world is full of mysteries, things we can't explain. But just because we don't understand them doesn't mean they're not real. Henry looked up, his eyes filled with tears. I. I was wrong, Beatrice. I should have believed you. Beatrice smiled, her heart filled with compassion. It's okay, Henry. We're in this together. And together, we'll uncover the truth. Henry nodded, a newfound determination in his eyes. You're right. We need to find out what happened to Maggie, to give her the peace she deserves. The two of them stood up, their resolve unwavering. They knew that the journey ahead would be filled with challenges and dangers. But they were ready, for they had each other, and the truth on their side. As they left the office, the lights returned to normal, and the chill in the air dissipated. But the echoes of Maggie's plea lingered, a haunting reminder of the mystery that lay ahead. Together, Beatrice and Henry set out on a quest to uncover the truth, to bring justice to Maggie's spirit. And as they delved deeper into the past, they discovered a tale of love, betrayal, and tragedy, a story that would change their lives forever. Chapter 6 Layers of the Past The Minneapolis Institute of Art was silent, the last of the visitors having left hours ago. 
The grand halls, usually filled with the hum of conversation and the soft footsteps of patrons, now echoed with an eerie stillness. But in one of the restoration rooms, two figures were hard at work, their focus unwavering. Beatrice and Henry stood before the painting of the Long Island Mansion, their eyes scanning its intricate details. Armed with the knowledge from the historian's journal and their own experiences, they were determined to uncover the hidden painting beneath. Using delicate tools and solvents, Beatrice carefully began to remove the top layer of paint. Each brushstroke revealed more of the hidden masterpiece, a world lost to time and memory. As the hours passed, a new scene began to emerge, one that sent shivers down their spines. The painting depicted the same grand mansion, but the atmosphere was starkly different. Dark clouds loomed overhead, casting the mansion in an ominous shadow. In the foreground stood Maggie, her white dress billowing in the wind. But it was her expression that held their attention. Her eyes, filled with fear and desperation, seemed to plead with the viewer, telling a tale of sorrow and betrayal. As Beatrice and Henry took in the haunting image, they felt a deep sense of sadness. The painting was more than just a work of art. It was a window into Maggie's soul, a glimpse into her tragic end. We need to go to the mansion, Beatrice whispered, her voice filled with determination. We need to find out what happened to Maggie, to give her the peace she deserves. Henry nodded in agreement. You're right. We need to uncover the truth no matter where it takes us. With a newfound sense of purpose, the duo made their way to Long Island. The journey was long and tiring, but they were undeterred. As they approached the mansion, they were struck by its grandeur. The building, though aged, still stood tall and proud, a testament to its storied past. But as they entered the mansion, they felt a shift in the atmosphere. The air grew cold, and the shadows seemed to deepen. The echoes of the past still lingered, waiting to be uncovered. As they explored the mansion, they were drawn to the grand ballroom. The room, though empty, seemed to pulse with energy. And then, they heard it. A soft, whispered voice, echoing through the room. Help me. Beatrice and Henry exchanged a glance their hearts racing. They weren't alone. From the shadows emerged a figure, dressed in the attire of a butler from the 1800s. His eyes, though hollow, held a hint of recognition. Clarence, Beatrice whispered, remembering the name from the historian's journal. The spirit nodded, a sad smile on his lips. Yes, it is I, Clarence the butler of this grand mansion. I have been waiting for you. Beatrice took a step forward, her voice filled with compassion. Clarence, we're here to help. We want to uncover the truth, to bring justice to Maggie's spirit. Clarence's eyes filled with tears. Maggie. Dot dot. She was like a daughter to me. I tried to protect her, but I failed. Henry, his skepticism replaced by a deep sense of empathy, spoke up. Clarence, tell us what happened. Help us uncover the truth. Clarence nodded, his voice filled with sorrow. It was a dark time. Maggie was in love with a man her family disapproved of. They tried to keep them apart, but their love was too strong. One fateful night, they planned to elope to start a new life together. But they were betrayed, and Maggie met a tragic end. Beatrice's eyes filled with tears as she listened to Clarence's tale. We need to find out who betrayed them, to bring them to justice. Clarence nodded, his determination evident. I will help you, for Maggie's sake. With Clarence's guidance, Beatrice and Henry delved deeper into the mansion's history uncovering a tale of love, betrayal, and tragedy. And as they pieced together the puzzle, 
they realized that the truth was more complex than they had imagined. But they were undeterred, for they knew that the truth, no matter how painful, had the power to set Maggie's spirit free. And with Clarence by their side, they were ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead, to bring justice to Maggie and give her the peace she deserved. Chapter 7 Echoes of a Lost Love The grand ballroom of the Long Island mansion was bathed in the soft glow of candlelight. The chandeliers overhead sparkled with a brilliance that belied the age of the mansion. The room was filled with the soft hum of conversation, the rustle of silk gowns, and the melodic notes of a waltz being played on a grand piano. In the midst of the revelry stood Maggie, radiant in a gown of deep blue that complemented her raven black hair. Her eyes sparkled with excitement, but there was an underlying sadness, a shadow that hinted at a deeper turmoil. As she danced with a tall, handsome man, their movements in perfect harmony, it was evident to all who watched that they were deeply in love. But every stolen glance, every whispered word, was tinged with a sense of urgency, a knowledge that their time together was limited. The man, Thomas, was the son of a wealthy merchant, while Maggie was the daughter of the mansion's owner. Their love was forbidden, a secret they guarded with their lives. But as the night wore on, the weight of their secret became too much to bear. In a secluded corner of the ballroom, away from prying eyes, Thomas took Maggie's hand, his voice filled with desperation. We cannot go on like this, Maggie. I cannot bear to be apart from you. Maggie's eyes filled with tears as she nodded in agreement. I feel the same way, Thomas. But what can we do? Our families will never accept our love. Thomas took a deep breath, his determination evident. Then we must run away, start a new life together, far from here. Maggie hesitated, the weight of their decision weighing heavily on her. Are you sure, Thomas? It won't be easy. Thomas nodded, his eyes filled with love. I am sure, Maggie. I would rather face a lifetime of hardship with you by my side than a moment of happiness without you. With their decision made, the two lovers began to make their plans. They would leave the mansion under the cover of darkness, making their way to a nearby port where they would board a ship bound for a new land. But as the days passed, their secret became harder to keep. Whispers of their forbidden love spread like wildfire reaching the ears of Maggie's father. Enraged by the betrayal, he confronted Maggie, his anger evident. You will not see that boy again, he thundered, his voice echoing through the mansion. I forbid it. Maggie, her spirit unbroken, stood her ground. I love him, father. I cannot live without him. Her father's response was swift and brutal. Then you will live without him here, in this mansion, for the rest of your days. With that, Maggie was locked in her room, a prisoner in her own home. Days turned into weeks, and Maggie's spirit began to wane. She longed for Thomas, for the touch of his hand, the sound of his voice. But fate had other plans. One fateful night, as a storm raged outside, Maggie received a message from Thomas. He was waiting for her at the cliffs, ready to whisk her away to their new life. With a newfound sense of hope, Maggie made her escape, making her way to the cliffs. But as she reached the edge, she was met with a sight that broke her heart. Thomas, betrayed by one of the mansion's servants, was being held by Maggie's father and his men. As Maggie watched in horror, a struggle ensued. Thomas, outnumbered and overpowered, was pushed off the cliff, his body disappearing into the raging sea below. Maggie's scream echoed through the night, a sound of pure anguish. She rushed to the edge, ready to join her love in death. But before she could jump, she was restrained, 
dragged back to the mansion by her father's men. Locked in her room, Maggie's spirit was broken. She refused to eat, to speak, to live. And within days, she passed away, her heart unable to bear the weight of her loss. Back in the present, Beatrice and Henry listened in stunned silence as Clarence recounted Maggie's tragic tale. The weight of the past hung heavily in the air, the echoes of a lost love still resonating within the walls of the mansion. Beatrice, tears streaming down her face, spoke up. We have to help her, Henry. We have to give her the peace she deserves. Henry nodded in agreement, his voice filled with determination. We will, Beatrice. We will uncover the truth, bring justice to those responsible, and give Maggie the closure she needs. With Clarence by their side, the duo set out on their quest, determined to right the wrongs of the past. And as they delved deeper into the mystery, they discovered a tale of love, betrayal, and tragedy, a story that would change their lives forever. Chapter 8 Whispers from the Shadows The Long Island Mansion, with its grandeur and opulence, was a testament to the wealth and power of its owners. But beneath its polished facade lay a web of dark secrets, tales of betrayal and tragedy that had been buried for generations. Beatrice and Henry, with Clarence's guidance, delved deeper into the mansion's history. The old butler, with his ethereal presence, seemed to be a bridge between the past and the present, a guardian of the mansion's secrets. As they explored the dimly lit corridors, Clarence began to share more about the mansion's past. This mansion, he began, his voice echoing through the halls, has seen its fair share of joy and sorrow. But Maggie's tale is by far the most tragic. Beatrice, her curiosity piqued, acts, Clarence, how did you come to be here? What is your connection to Maggie? Clarence paused, his eyes distant, as if lost in memories. I was the mansion's head butler during Maggie's time. I watched her grow from a playful child to a beautiful young woman. I was there when she met Thomas, saw the love they shared. And I was there on that fateful night, when their love was torn apart. Henry, his skepticism replaced by empathy, spoke up. Clarence, what happened that night? Who betrayed them? Clarence took a deep breath, his voice filled with sorrow. It was one of our own, a servant who was jealous of Maggie's happiness. He betrayed them to her father, leading to the tragic events of that night. Beatrice's eyes filled with tears as she listened to Clarence's tale. And what about you, Clarence? How did you come to be a spirit? Clarence's eyes darkened, a hint of anger flashing in them. I tried to help Maggie and Thomas, to give them a chance at happiness. But I was discovered, accused of treason, and met a tragic end. Henry, his heart heavy with the weight of the past, spoke up. Clarence, we want to help. We want to uncover the truth, to bring justice to Maggie and Thomas. Clarence nodded, a sad smile on his lips. I know, and I will help you. But first, you must understand the depth of the betrayal, the darkness that lies at the heart of this mansion. With Clarence's guidance, Beatrice and Henry began their investigation. They explored the mansion's hidden rooms, uncovering evidence of Maggie's murder. Old letters, diaries, and journals painted a picture of a love story that was doomed from the start. But it was in the mansion's attic that they made their most shocking discovery. Hidden beneath layers of dust and cobwebs was a trunk, its contents a testament to the mansion's dark past. Inside, they found Maggie's diary, its pages filled with her hopes, dreams, and fears. As Beatrice read the diary, she felt a deep connection to Maggie, as if their souls were intertwined. The diary detailed Maggie's love for Thomas, the challenges they faced, 
and the betrayal that led to their tragic end. But it was the last entry that sent shivers down their spines. Written in a shaky hand, it read, I know the truth, the identity of the traitor. But it is too late for me. I can only hope that one day, justice will be served. Beatrice and Henry exchanged a glance, the weight of their discovery evident. They had the evidence they needed, the key to uncovering the truth. With Clarence's help, they set up a seance, hoping to communicate with Maggie's spirit. The room was dimly lit, the only light coming from a circle of candles. The air was heavy with anticipation, the silence broken only by the soft rustling of the curtains. As the seance began, the room grew cold, and the candles flickered. A soft, whispered voice echoed through the room, sending shivers down their spines. Help me. Beatrice, her voice filled with compassion, spoke up. Maggie, we're here to help. We know the truth, the identity of the traitor. We will bring him to justice. The voice grew stronger, more insistent. Thank you. But be careful. The traitor is closer than you think. With that, the voice faded, leaving Beatrice and Henry in stunned silence. They knew that their quest was far from over, that they would face challenges and dangers. But they were determined to uncover the truth, to bring justice to Maggie and Thomas, and to give their spirits the peace they deserved. Chapter 9 Shadows of the Past The Long Island Mansion with its sprawling corridors and hidden rooms, was a labyrinth of memories. Each corner held whispers of the past, echoes of laughter and tears, love and betrayal. As Beatrice and Henry delved deeper into its history, they found themselves drawn into a world where the line between the living and the dead was blurred. Guided by Clarence's ethereal presence, they began their exploration. The mansion, with its grand ballrooms and opulent chambers, was a testament to the wealth and power of its owners. But beneath its polished facade lay a web of dark secrets, tales of love and loss that had been buried for generations. As they wandered through the dimly lit corridors, they encountered other spirits, each with their own story to tell. There was Eleanor, a young woman who had died of a broken heart her spirit forever searching for her lost love. And then there was William, a soldier who had met a tragic end on the battlefield, his spirit still haunted by the horrors of war. But it was in the mansion's library that they made their most shocking discovery. Hidden behind a bookshelf was a secret room, its walls lined with old letters, diaries, and journals. As they began to read, they were transported back in time, to a world where love and betrayal went hand in hand. The letters painted a picture of a love triangle, a tale of passion and jealousy that had ended in tragedy. Maggie, with her raven black hair and piercing blue eyes, had been the object of affection for two men, Thomas and Edward. While Thomas was the love of her life, Edward, driven by jealousy, had plotted to keep them apart. As Beatrice and Henry delved deeper into the letters, they began to piece together the puzzle. Edward, unable to bear the thought of Maggie with another man, had betrayed them to her father, leading to the tragic events of that fateful night. But as they got closer to the truth, they faced challenges at every turn. The mansion, with its shifting corridors and hidden traps, seemed to be alive, determined to keep its secrets buried. They encountered spirits, both benevolent and malevolent, each with their own agenda. But it was Maggie's spirit that provided them with the clues they needed. Through whispered messages and cryptic visions, she guided them on their quest, leading them to the heart of the mystery. As they stood in the secret room, surrounded by the echoes of the past, Beatrice and Henry made a vow. They would uncover the truth bring justice to Maggie and Thomas, and give their spirits the peace they deserved. With renewed determination, they set out on their quest, 
ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. And as they delved deeper into the mansion's history, they discovered a tale of love, betrayal, and tragedy, a story that would change their lives forever. Chapter 10 Unveiling the Abyss The Long Island Mansion, with its grandeur and opulence, had always been a beacon of power and prestige. But as Beatrice and Henry had come to realize, its walls held stories that were far from the fairy tales one might expect from such a regal edifice. The deeper they delved, the more they uncovered the mansion's dark secrets, each more chilling than the last. Guided by the ethereal presence of Clarence and the cryptic clues from Maggie's spirit, they found themselves in the mansion's underground chambers. The air was thick with tension, the weight of the past pressing down on them. The dimly lit corridors echoed with whispers, the shadows seeming to come alive. As they made their way through the maze-like chambers, the events leading to Maggie's death began to unfold before them. Through a series of visions, they were transported back in time, witnessing the tragic events as they played out. They saw Maggie and Thomas, their love pure and untainted, planning their escape. But lurking in the shadows was Edward, his heart consumed by jealousy and rage. Unable to bear the thought of Maggie with another man, he had plotted their downfall, betraying them to her father. The visions grew more intense, the emotions raw and palpable. They saw the confrontation on the cliffs, the struggle, and the tragic end. They felt Maggie's despair, her heartbreak, and her longing for justice. But as the visions faded, they were brought back to the present, where they were met with a chilling sight. The spirits of Edward and Maggie's father, their forms twisted and malevolent, stood before them, their eyes filled with hatred. Beatrice, her voice filled with determination, spoke up. We know the truth, the depth of your betrayal. You cannot hide any longer. Edward's spirit, his voice dripping with malice, responded, You think you can judge us? You, who know nothing of our pain, our suffering. Henry, his courage unwavering, stepped forward. We have seen the past, witnessed your actions. You cannot escape justice. The spirits, their anger evident, grew hostile. The air grew cold, the shadows deepening. Beatrice and Henry found themselves surrounded, the spirits closing in on them. But just as all seemed lost, Clarence intervened. His form, usually calm and composed, was now filled with a fierce determination. Enough! He thundered, his voice echoing through the chambers. You have tormented this mansion and its inhabitants for too long. It is time for you to face the consequences of your actions. The spirits, taken aback by Clarence's sudden show of power, hesitated. Seizing the opportunity, Beatrice and Henry began to recite an incantation, one that would banish the spirits and bring peace to the mansion. As they chanted, the spirits began to weaken, their forms fading. Edward, his voice filled with rage, screamed, you cannot defeat us. We will return. But as the incantation reached its climax, the spirits were banished, their forms disappearing into the abyss. The chambers, once filled with tension and malice, were now bathed in a soft, ethereal glow. The weight of the past had been lifted, the mansion finally at peace. Beatrice and Henry, exhausted but triumphant, turned to Clarence, gratitude evident in their eyes. Thank you, Beatrice whispered, her voice filled with emotion. Without you, we could not have done it. Clarence, his form fading, smiled. It was my duty, my responsibility. I failed Maggie once, I could not fail her again. With that, he disappeared, leaving Beatrice and Henry alone in the chambers. They had faced the darkness, confronted the past, and emerged victorious. The mansion's dark secrets had been unveiled, 
and justice had been served. As they made their way back to the surface, they knew that their journey was far from over. But with the knowledge they had gained and the allies they had made, they were ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. Chapter 11 The Canvas of Truth The Long Island Mansion, with its sprawling corridors and grand ballrooms, had seen its fair share of confrontations. But none were as intense, as ethereal, or as otherworldly as the one that was about to unfold. The air was thick with anticipation, the weight of centuries pressing down on the mansion's inhabitants. Beatrice and Henry, having uncovered the mansion's dark secrets, now found themselves at the heart of a confrontation that would determine the fate of the spirits that haunted its halls. As they stood in the grand ballroom, the room where Maggie had once danced with Thomas, they were met with a chilling sight. Maggie's spirit, her form radiant and ethereal, stood at one end of the room, her eyes filled with determination. Opposite her were the spirits of Edward and her father, their forms twisted and malevolent. The tension was palpable, the silence broken only by the soft rustling of the curtains. Maggie, her voice filled with emotion, spoke up. It is time for you to face the consequences of your actions. You cannot hide from the truth any longer. Edward, his voice dripping with malice, responded, You think you can defeat us? You, who were so easily betrayed. Maggie, her spirit unbroken, retorted, I may have been betrayed, but I am not defeated. I have allies, friends who will stand by me. With that, she gestured to Beatrice and Henry, who stepped forward, their determination evident. Together, they began to recite an incantation, one that would banish the spirits and bring peace to the mansion. As they chanted, the spirits began to weaken, their forms fading. But Edward, his power evident, fought back, his form growing stronger. A battle between the spirits ensued, the air filled with flashes of light and bursts of energy. Beatrice and Henry, drawing on their newfound knowledge and strength, played a crucial role in the confrontation. Using the artifacts they had uncovered, they channeled the mansion's energy, directing it towards Edward and Maggie's father. The battle raged on, the outcome uncertain. But as the incantation reached its climax, Maggie's spirit grew stronger, her form radiant. With a final burst of energy, she banished Edward and her father, their forms disappearing into the abyss. The ballroom, once filled with tension and malice, was now bathed in a soft, ethereal glow. The weight of the past had been lifted, the mansion finally at peace. Maggie her spirit at rest, turned to Beatrice and Henry, gratitude evident in her eyes. Thank you, she whispered, her voice filled with emotion. You have given me the peace I so desperately sought. Beatrice, tears streaming down her face, responded, it was our duty, our responsibility. We could not let your spirit remain in torment. Henry, his voice filled with admiration, added, you were brave, Maggie. You faced your tormentors, and you emerged victorious. Maggie, her form fading, smiled. It was not just my victory, but ours. Together, we have banished the darkness and brought light to the mansion. With that, she disappeared, leaving Beatrice and Henry alone in the ballroom. They had faced the past, confronted the spirits, and emerged victorious. But their journey was far from over. As they made their way to the mansion's gallery, they were met with a sight that took their breath away. The hidden painting, the one that had started their journey, now stood revealed. The painting depicted Maggie and Thomas, their love pure and untainted. But beneath it, hidden from view, was another painting one that told a different story. It showed Edward, his form twisted and malevolent, plotting their downfall. 
Beatrice, her voice filled with emotion, spoke up. This painting, it tells the true story, the depth of Edward's betrayal. Henry, his eyes filled with sadness, added, it is a testament to the power of love and the depths of jealousy. A tale of passion, betrayal, and redemption. As they stood in the gallery, surrounded by the echoes of the past, they knew that their journey had come to an end. They had uncovered the truth, brought justice to Maggie and Thomas, and given their spirits the peace they deserved. The mansion, with its grandeur and opulence, was now at peace, its dark secrets unveiled. And as Beatrice and Henry made their way out, they knew that they had played a crucial role in its redemption, leaving an indelible mark on its history. Chapter 12 Echoes of Eternity The sun cast a golden hue over the Minneapolis Institute of Art, its rays filtering through the grand windows and illuminating the vast corridors. The once foreboding atmosphere of the museum had transformed into one of serenity and reverence. The dark cloud that had once hung over the lost history exhibition had lifted, replaced by an aura of tranquility. In the heart of the museum, where the exhibition was housed, a new addition had been made. A tribute to Maggie, the spirit whose tragic tale had captivated and haunted the museum's visitors. The tribute consisted of the revealed painting of Maggie and Thomas, their love story immortalized in oil and canvas. Beside it, a plaque detailed the tale of their love, betrayal, and the eventual redemption brought about by Beatrice and Henry's relentless pursuit of the truth. Visitors flocked to the tribute, drawn by the tale of love and tragedy. Many left flowers, notes, and other tokens of remembrance. The once feared and avoided Connecticut and Tudor rooms, where the most intense paranormal activities had been reported, were now places of reflection and homage. Maggie's spirit, which had once roamed the museum's corridors in anguish, had found peace. The revelation of the truth, the unmasking of the betrayal, and the justice that had been meted out had set her free. The museum was no longer haunted by her restless spirit, and the paranormal activities that had once plagued it had ceased. Beatrice and Henry, having played a pivotal role in unveiling the truth and bringing peace to Maggie's spirit, found themselves at the center of attention. They were hailed as heroes, their bravery and determination celebrated. But for them, the journey had been a deeply personal one, a quest for understanding and redemption. One evening, as the sun set and the museum's visitors began to depart, Beatrice and Henry found themselves in the Connecticut room, the place where their journey had begun. They sat in silence, reflecting on the events that had transpired and the mysteries they had unraveled. Beatrice, her voice soft and contemplative, spoke up. It's strange, isn't it? How the past can reach out and touch the present how the actions of those long gone can still have repercussions today. Henry, his gaze fixed on the tribute to Maggie, responded, Yes, it's a reminder that our actions have consequences, that they can echo through time and affect those who come after us. Beatrice, her eyes filled with wonder, added, And it's also a testament to the power of love, how it can transcend time and space how it can endure even in the face of betrayal and tragedy. Henry, his voice filled with emotion, said, It's a lesson for all of us, a reminder to cherish the ones we love, to hold them close and never let go. The two sat in silence, lost in thought, the weight of their journey pressing down on them. They had faced the unknown, confronted the past, and emerged victorious. But the journey had also changed them, opened their eyes to the mysteries of the afterlife and the power of love. As they left the museum, hand in hand, they knew that their journey was far from over. They had uncovered one mystery, but there were many more waiting to be unraveled. And as they walked into the night, the echoes of the past still ringing in their ears, 
They were filled with a sense of wonder and anticipation, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. Chapter 13 The Legacy of Shadows The Minneapolis Institute of Art was abuzz with activity. The Lost History exhibition, which had drawn visitors from all corners of the country, was drawing to a close. The paintings, each with its own tale of love, betrayal, and redemption, were being carefully packed, ready to be transported to their next destination. The museum staff, who had once viewed the exhibition with a mix of fear and trepidation, now approached it with reverence. The tale of Maggie's spirit, her tragic love story, and the eventual redemption brought about by Beatrice and Henry had become the stuff of legend. And as the paintings were packed away, the staff couldn't help but share their own experiences, their own encounters with the paranormal. In the museum's grand hall, a press conference had been organized. Journalists from all over the country had gathered, eager to hear the tale of the haunted exhibition. And as the museum's director took to the podium, the room fell silent. We are gathered here today, he began, to share the tale of the Lost History exhibition, a tale that has captivated and haunted us all. But this is not just a tale of paintings and art. It is a tale of love, betrayal, and redemption. As he spoke, the journalists hung on to his every word, their pens scribbling furiously. The tale of Maggie's spirit, her tragic love story, and the eventual redemption brought about by Beatrice and Henry was recounted in vivid detail. And as the director concluded, the room erupted in applause. But the press conference was not just about the past. It was also about the future. Beatrice, having played a pivotal role in unveiling the truth and bringing peace to Maggie's spirit, had made a life-changing decision. She had decided to use her gift, her ability to communicate with the spirits, to help other restless souls find peace. I have been blessed with a gift, she said, her voice filled with emotion. A gift that has allowed me to communicate with the spirits, to help them find peace. And I have decided to use this gift to help others, to bring solace to those who have been wronged, to bring justice to those who have been betrayed. The room erupted in applause, the journalists captivated by her words. And as she stepped down from the podium, she was met with a sea of cameras, her story now the stuff of legend. But Beatrice was not the only one who had been changed by the events at the museum. Henry, having witnessed the power of the spirits and the mysteries of the afterlife, had decided to share his experiences with the world. He had penned a book, detailing the events at the museum, the tale of Maggie's spirit, and the eventual redemption brought about by Beatrice and himself. The book, titled, Echoes of Eternity, became an instant bestseller. It was hailed as a masterpiece, a tale that was both haunting and redemptive. And as Henry embarked on a book tour, he was met with adoring fans, eager to hear his tale to delve into the mysteries of the afterlife. The Lost History exhibition may have come to an end, but its legacy lived on. The tale of Maggie's spirit, her tragic love story, and the eventual redemption brought about by Beatrice and Henry had become the stuff of legend. And as the paintings were transported to their next destination, they carried with them a tale that would never be forgotten, a tale that would echo through eternity. Chapter 14. Whispers in the Shadows The city of Minneapolis, with its towering skyscrapers and bustling streets, was a hub of activity. But beneath its modern facade lay a world that few could see, a world of spirits and shadows, of love and betrayal. And at the heart of this world was Beatrice, a woman with a gift, a gift that allowed her to communicate with the spirits, to help them find peace. Beatrice's office, located in a quaint building in the heart of the city, was a testament to her new career. The walls were lined with artifacts, each with its own tale of love and betrayal. And as she sat at her desk, 
Pouring over her notes, she couldn't help but reflect on her journey, on the events that had led her to this point. It had all started with the Lost History exhibition, with the tale of Maggie's spirit and her tragic love story. But that had been just the beginning. Since then, Beatrice had helped countless spirits find peace, had delved into the mysteries of the afterlife, and had become a beacon of hope for those who had been wronged. Her phone rang, breaking her reverie. It was a call from a distraught woman, her voice filled with anguish. Please, she pleaded, you have to help me. My husband, he passed away recently, and his spirit, it's restless. It's haunting our home, and I don't know what to do. Beatrice, her voice filled with compassion, responded, Don't worry, I'll help you. I'll come over tomorrow and see what I can do. The next day, as Beatrice made her way to the woman's home, she was joined by a familiar face. Henry, having witnessed the power of the spirits and the mysteries of the afterlife, had decided to join Beatrice on her investigations. Together, they made a formidable team, their combined knowledge and experience allowing them to delve into the mysteries of the afterlife and help the spirits find peace. The woman's home, a grand mansion located on the outskirts of the city, was a testament to her wealth and status. But beneath its opulent facade lay a world of shadows, of love and betrayal. And as Beatrice and Henry made their way through its vast corridors, they could feel the weight of the past pressing down on them. They were met with a chilling sight. The spirit of the woman's husband, his form twisted and malevolent, roamed the mansion's halls, his eyes filled with anguish. Beatrice, her gift allowing her to communicate with the spirit, approached him, her voice filled with compassion. Why are you here? She asks, why are you haunting this place? The spirit, his voice filled with emotion, responded, I was betrayed, betrayed by those I loved. And now, I am trapped here, unable to find peace. Beatrice, her heart filled with compassion, responded, Don't worry, we'll help you. We'll help you find peace. And with that, she and Henry set to work, delving into the mansion's history uncovering its dark secrets, and helping the spirit find peace. It was a challenging task, one that tested their knowledge and experience. But they were determined, determined to help the spirit find peace, to bring solace to those who had been wronged. And as they worked, they were met with a sight that took their breath away. The spirit, his form now radiant and ethereal, stood before them his eyes filled with gratitude. Thank you, he whispered, his voice filled with emotion. You have given me the peace I so desperately sought. Beatrice, tears streaming down her face, responded, it was our duty, our responsibility. We could not let you remain in torment. And with that, the spirit disappeared, leaving Beatrice and Henry alone in the mansion. They had faced the unknown, confronted the past, and emerged victorious. And as they made their way out of the mansion, they were filled with a sense of accomplishment, a sense of purpose. Their exploits soon became the stuff of legend, their tales of love and betrayal captivating the city. And as they delved into the mysteries of the afterlife, helping the spirits find peace, they became renowned in the paranormal community. Their names whispered in hushed tones, their legacy immortalized in the annals of history. But for Beatrice and Henry, it was not about fame or fortune. It was about helping those who had been wronged, about bringing solace to those who had been betrayed. And as they continued their journey, delving into the mysteries of the afterlife, they were filled with a sense of purpose, a sense of destiny ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. Chapter 15 Shadows of Tomorrow The city of Minneapolis was no stranger to tales of the supernatural, but none had captivated its residents quite like the story of the Lost History 
Exhibition The Tale of Maggie's Spirit, Her Tragic Love Story, and the eventual redemption brought about by Beatrice and Henry had become the stuff of legend. And as the city basked in the glow of this newfound fame, another tale was taking the world by storm. Henry's book, Echoes of Eternity, had become an instant bestseller. It was hailed as a masterpiece, a tale that was both haunting and redemptive. And as Henry embarked on a book tour, he was met with adoring fans, eager to hear his tale, to delve into the mysteries of the afterlife. The Minneapolis Institute of Art, once a bastion of culture and refinement, had gained a new reputation. It was now known as one of the most haunted locations in the country, its halls and corridors teeming with spirits and shadows. And as visitors flocked to the museum, eager to catch a glimpse of the paranormal, the staff couldn't help but revel in the newfound fame. But for Beatrice, the journey was far from over. She had embarked on a new career, one that saw her delving into the mysteries of the afterlife, helping restless spirits find peace. And as she made her way through the city, she was often joined by a familiar face. Clarence, the butler's spirit who had once guided her and Henry through the mansion's dark secrets, was now her guide, helping her navigate the world of the supernatural. One evening, as Beatrice sat in her office, poring over her notes, she was interrupted by a knock on the door. It was Henry, his face lit up with excitement. I've got some news, he said, his voice filled with anticipation. My book, it's been optioned for a movie. They want us to be consultants. Beatrice, her eyes filled with wonder, responded, that's incredible. But are you sure? Are you sure you want to delve into the world of the supernatural again? Henry, his gaze fixed on Beatrice, responded, of course. It's our duty, our responsibility. We can't let the spirits remain in torment. And with that, the two set off on a new adventure, one that would see them delving into the mysteries of the afterlife, helping restless spirits find peace. They were joined by Clarence his knowledge and experience proving invaluable. And as they made their way through the city, they were met with a sight that took their breath away. The spirits, their forms radiant and ethereal, roamed the city's streets, their eyes filled with gratitude. They had been set free, their souls no longer trapped in torment. And as Beatrice, Henry, and Clarence made their way through the city, they were filled with a sense of purpose, a sense of destiny. The story of the Lost History exhibition may have come to an end, but its legacy lived on. The tale of Maggie's spirit, her tragic love story, and the eventual redemption brought about by Beatrice and Henry had become the stuff of legend. And as the city basked in the glow of this newfound fame, another tale was taking the world by storm. The story of Beatrice, Henry, and Clarence, their journey into the world of the supernatural, their quest to help restless spirits find peace, was just beginning. And as they embarked on this new adventure, they were filled with a sense of wonder and anticipation, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. We hope you have enjoyed our storytelling offering tonight. Please be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to be alerted of future weekly additions to our collections. Paranormal Untold Stories